Hey everyone, welcome to my September wrap up. A lot of these books I read in previous reading vlogs, so for those I'm kind of just going to skim past pretty quickly, but I did want to discuss some of the books that I haven't gone into great detail with yet. And the first one that I started with in September was Exalted by Anna Dorn. It tells uh, parallel stories of Emily and Dawn. They are two women that live in California and Emily is a professional astrologist with a huge follower account on Instagram and she has grown world weary and pessimistic with astrology mostly because it's not giving her as fat of a paycheck anymore. And Dawn is trying to live out her high school Gloria days and not realizing that they're not so glorious anymore in middle age, but she is known around town by ex-girlfriends and prospective girlfriends as the woman with a huge temper. So their storylines converge at the end in a shocking and amusing way that I really enjoyed. I think Anna Dorn has a lot to say about self-obsession and the way that we lean on horoscopes and astrology to justify our behaviors and dismiss any need for um, hard work to change who we are or change our change our life paths and I would recommend this book to anyone who likes to test a mosh fag. I don't think it's as acutely well written as a mosh fag book however I think this is kind of a I think this is more of like a mosh fag starter pack where I can see a lot of potential in the characters that Dorn writes and some sneaky instances of detailed descriptions of bodily functions which we all know mosh fag likes to do but I think Dorn could write a lot of really great books and I enjoyed this one. The next book I read in September was part of my reading psychological Asian fiction vlog and I will link that down below. That book is The Whole by Hiroko Oyamata and this is a tiny book that focuses on domestication and female isolation within gender roles and it takes a unsettling turn for the main character who is now a domestic goddess or an angel in the house who doesn't really want to be there and she feels like she's disconnected from society and that disconnection manifests into a monster that she sees which leads her to chase after it and she falls into a hole and of course the hole could have an array of meanings as the main character is essentially stuck, stuck in many ways, stuck in her situation and stuck in her marriage and so forth. I think this is a astute look at what is most often a woman's plight as far as being contained and set off to the side and having expectations of keeping a house and keeping everyone's affairs in order instead of having your own identity and cultivating your own interests. So I would recommend this read. The next book that I read in that reading vlog was City of Ash and Red and this one was sort of a pandemic novel. It was grotesque in a lot of its descriptions. It focuses on disease and rot and it follows a rat exterminator who is assigned to a project in a city that is mostly falling apart and is ravaged by said rats and while on this job he is taken into quarantine and in quarantine he discovers that he is the number one suspect in his ex-wife's murder so this one was unsettling to read given the imagery but it also has a little bit of a uh, murder mystery in it so I think anyone who likes a bit of darkness and a little bit of intrigue would find this a pleasurable reading experience. Maybe not pleasurable but appropriately spooky. Now the next book that I read in that series was Fish and Exile by Vicky Now and this book focuses on grief. Uh, the author uses western mythology to create imagery and depth to a married couple's sense of loss when their two children are killed and the main focus of the book is essentially how 
people grieve in their own ways but also how lonely it can be to grieve within a marriage that is falling apart because they no longer have that connection of children between them they've grown over time and then this final death has just split them apart almost entirely there are emotional affairs and physical affairs in this book and it is a not a traditional not a traditional halloween scary kind of story but it definitely has to do a lot with ghosts um the ghosts of who we were and the ghosts of a life that we imagined for ourselves after that series, I decided to read my tiny poetry collection, and in that vlog, which I will also link down below, I read The True Book of Animal Homes by Allison Titus, Autopsy by Dante Collins, and A Cruelty Special to Our Species by Emily Youngman Yoon. And of those three, I really enjoyed Autopsy the most. Autopsy follows Dante's complicated relationship with their mother after her passing, as well as their queerness and their blackness and the intersection of grief and identity. Secondly, I really enjoy a cruelty special to our species, which follows the Japanese occupation of Korea and the sexual assault faced by many Korean women who were titled comfort women by the Japanese. Often these women were raped and um, brutalized by allied soldiers and Emily discusses that global history as well as her own personal family history. And lastly, I sort of liked, thought it was okay, um, The True Book of Animal Homes, which focuses on how we find spaces in unexpected places. So burrowing animals versus finding comfort in a break room in our office space. There's a lot of crossover with natural imagery and the very sterile imagery of our everyday environments. The next book that I read in September was Tender as the Flesh by Augustina Bestetica, and this was disgusting. It was kind of like Scared Straight from Meat Eaters, and I enjoyed what it had to say deep down under all of the blood and severed fingers and brutalized females who have their vocal cords ripped out so they don't scream but underneath all of that um huge focus on the brutality of man and the and the brutality within the farming industry and i think i think it draws a lot of empathy for animals by using humans and their stead in addition to all the commentary on the state of farming <laughs> is the commentary on the objectification of women. Again, as I said, females are treated as breeding stock to make more humans and to make more money. So, of course, a lot of these themes conclude in capitalism. So, the objectification of women and how it feeds capitalism. And this is a great political novel covered in blood. And taking a turn from the grotesque to the sad, I read Mayflies by Andrew Hagen. And this is a Scottish novel that takes place in the mid 1980s. It follows a group of young men focusing primarily on the friendship between James and Tully. James looks up to Tully as someone who is brave and acts on instinct, where James is a little more hesitant and bookish, but the, the two boys, along with a group of their friends, plan a trip to Manchester, England to follow all of their favorite bands. Of course, the Smiths are one of those bands, and I listened to the Smiths while I was reading this just because it seemed very thematic. And the book is basically split into two parts, where it's youth and adulthood. So we really see the birth of this friendship and the first roots grow and in the second half of the book we see how this relationship has matured how these two older men haven't always talked to each other consistently but they are still in each other's lives and telly calls james with some health news where the roles that they have always held are flipped upside down where james needs to be the leader and take care of telly and this book was beautiful. 
It focuses on the very tender relationship between men, what it can be to be open with each other and sensitive to each other's needs and emotions, and it was very lovely to read that where it wasn't all buddy buddy, macho, whatever, slap each other on the back, drink beer. It was just very sensitive and I loved that and I highly suggest reading this. After reading Mayflies, I read Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart because Douglas Stewart blurbed the back of Mayflies and Young Mungo was the first book that I read in Linen Librarian's blurb telephone tag. And I have spoke about this just a little bit in that video. You should go and watch that with my Wednesday post. And Young Mungo is Douglas Stewart's second novel following the 2020 Booker Prize winner Shuggy Bain. And Young Mungo is also set in Scotland in the 80s, 90s, I believe. And once again, you have a very tender and sensitive boy at the center of the story. Young Mungo is living in a brash environment. There's political upheaval as people are losing their jobs. Margaret Thatcher is in power. There are strikes. And on top of all of that, there's a lot of religious bigotry in his neighborhood, where his older brother Hamish is leading the Protestants against the Catholic kids in the neighborhood in violent attacks. Jody, his older sister, takes the role as mother as their actual mother Maureen suffers from alcoholism and has failed to break the addiction and in this very violent environment young Mungo manages to find love with James who is a Catholic they form a bond that is always tense with fear that James's father will find out or that Young Mungo's older brother, Hamish, will find out, but as I said in my previous video, there are trigger warnings for violence, again, religious bigotry, and also pedophilia. There is a secondary story in Young Mungo that follows his camping trip with two older men. Um, his mom sent him with these two men that she barely knew on a fishing trip to make a man of him. But, of course, these two older men take advantage of young Mungo, and at times the book is quite bleak. Um, I mentioned before that I was afraid that this would fall into the kill your gaze category. It is definitely in the torture your gaze category, so be warned. But there is some shred of light and hope in this book that makes it readable. I highly suggest this. It is almost 400 pages, so it is kind of a chunker. Um, but it is a good investment of time. And then finally, my last read of September was the first book that I picked up for Jessica's Tiny Book Challenge, which I will have a video for next week. But that book was Box Hill by Adam Mars Jones, and this is, this is something I will talk more about in my next vlog, but just to give you a rundown, it is a another gay story and it's an emotionally abusive relationship between a man named Colin and a motorcyclist named Ray and and the subtitle of Box Hill is a story of low self-esteem and initially that's very funny but as you read the book it's very sad but yeah I liked it and I will talk more about that on Wednesday so that's my September wrap-up I hope you all enjoyed your reading this month as much as I did. I am currently reading Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This I first heard about through Jen Campbell. I absolutely love her channel and I have been looking forward to reading this but always just put it off because there's just so much to read but I'm finally getting to it and I will let you know what I think about that again in my Wednesday video talking about Jessica's tiny book challenge. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe. I post every Wednesday and Saturday. I talk a lot about literary fiction, memoir, and sometimes essay collections. And I also like to throw in some of my favorite music. If anyone has any band song suggestions along the lines of like Mitski, Japanese Breakfast, things like that, 
please drop some names down below. I would love to hear some new music. But yeah, thanks for watching this video and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Mm -hmm.